Now I'm giving the floor um, in, in person. <laughs> um, very, very excited to hear this uh, presentation. We have uh, Daniela Galai. Uh, she is an um, expert in media literacy from Moldova, and her presentation will be uh, the role of the librarians in promoting media literacy values in order to ensure personal and national security. Please. Thank you. Um, first, uh, I'm very glad to be here. I'm for the second time in this House of Light of Riga. The first time I conducted a group of librarians in 2017, and we came here to share our experience in media literacy. Actually, they uh, wanted to share their experience. And of course, they brought home Latvian uh, information and Latvian experience in this field. So right now I'm with another group of librarians. I'm accompanying them and I'm glad to be here as their media literacy expert and um, uh, the person who will help them during this uh, nice trip. So uh, I don't, uh, you have the information. So uh, I see libraries and librarians as bridges, bridges between uh, the information sphere and uh, what, we, what we say our citizens. Next slide, please. I will present myself a little bit. Next. Uh yeah. Sorry, Daniela, you have a remote there uh, in front uh, of you. Oh, okay. You can Thank switch you so slides much. by yourself. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I studied journalism and communication and work as a press print journalist uh, over five years. I also have a short experience in working in radio and TV. But in the last 10 years, I worked mainly for international NGOs like People in Need, uh, IREX, uh, uh, IREX Europe, so former IREX Europe right now, ERIM, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe you heard, it's uh, equal um, uh, rights and independent media, where I had the opportunity to share my knowledge and journalistic experience with the different target groups, but mainly with the librarians from Moldova. Currently, I'm the board member of a new created organization, Independent Media House, IMH, which works as a sales house for advertising in the benefit of the independent media. So exclusively, this organization was created by our headquarters from ERIM, uh, ERIM from Lyon, and it works in Moldova. Uh, my role here is to examine and to approve the independent media outlets who would benefit from the support of IMH and also to approve businesses who would place advertisement. In this way, I keep uh, the pulse of the, bo both media and private sectors and I understand better what the tendencies are on the media market in Moldova. Uh, as I was saying uh, before, uh, the target groups, the main target groups uh, are the librarians, but I also have worked in the last seven years with uh, independent media from Moldova, with journalists, students of journalism. Right now and today I will focus, of course, on librarians because they were my, uh, my main target group and I put a lot of heart in, in working with them. So uh, Erim made an assessment and yeah, the question is why Erim chose to work with librarians? Why not teachers? Why not other groups, target groups? So we did an assessment and understood that libraries and librarians have great potential in influencing people. People come at the library to find out the latest news, to exchange their views and opinions, and the librarians are the right persons who can guide them in the media jungle. That's how I call it. They are the bridges that link people to the trustful sources of information who help them navigate safely online, who can offer them the necessary skills and tools to counter fake or manipulation news. Our main partner during this project was the Association of Librarians from the Republic of Moldova, Abereme. We collaborated fruitfully over the last seven years, but I'll, ta I'll talk more about the results later on. Uh, for you to understand a little bit how things are going on in Moldova, I have to present a little bit the, the media, mass media situation. So, unfortunately, we, we still have um, uh, some Russian influence uh, there, and uh, uh, it's dominated by the Russian channels, even though we have a um, pro-European government. The Russian-funded press in a nebulous way promotes uh, propagandistic and manipulative programs, hostile narratives against NATO, against European Union, and they don't uh, talk or they uh, 
try to avoid subjects about the Repub uh, what is going on positively, positively in the Republic of Moldova and Romania. Um, I will just call a few uh, Russian uh, um, channels uh, that are very popular in the Republic of Moldova and according to the bar barometers, uh, they are uh, viewed by the majority of the population from Moldova, not only Russian speaking, but also Moldovan speakers. So it's Pervi Canal, uh, Moldovi, NTV, RN, RNTV, RTR, STS, TNT. Maybe you also here in Latvia have these channels and you know them. I don't know how what they promote here, but in Moldova, definitely they promote the Russian uh, message. Uh, they the, actually the studies and measurements show that. Um, Five of them uh, are dominated by Russian programs. So they, the Russian programs are simply retranslated in Moldova and people simply watch them. Of course, the majority are advertisement, but uh, uh, no, not advertisement, uh, are um, soft programs. So it's like uh, uh, TV shows, давай поженимся, жди меня и так далее. But still, uh, there are uh, news uh, news that are have uh, this propagandistic role. Uh, the owners of the pro-Russian TVs in Moldova are some politicians, and they for sure they are not uh, pro-Europeans. They are more uh, uh, committed to the Russian government. Uh, I also wanted to to say that. Um, the former president, our socialist president, Igor Dodon, and other pro-Russian politicians uh, are also always presented here in a very positive manner, and uh, these TVs never talk about them in negative ways. So it's clear um, uh, ma manipulation and uh, propaganda done through, through these stations. In general, Moldova has uh, 49 televisions and 36 radio stations. Um, the majority are based in Chisinau. So uh, we have also a series of independent and not biased, uh, non biased media outlets uh, which try to reflect the situation as close to the truth as possible. They seem to be on the top of the preferences of those who have uh, pro European visions. And then we will see what this happened. So manipulation and uh, propaganda, as you can see, is present in the daily life of the Moldovan citizens. That means that there is plenty of work for the experts in media literacy in Moldova. We see that the media and the Republic of Moldova practices a technique of manipulation by omission. There are reports about the refugees from Ukraine, but it is not mentioned where and how they come from. They are put in a negative light, they would, uh, that they would consume the resources of the state and that we, they would make a big disturbance in the Republic of Moldova. There are other uh, secondary narratives uh, who related to the chemical weapons laboratories that would exist in Ukraine, but also in the Republic of Moldova. We have seen news made by the pro-Kremlin media, or associated with the Party of Socialists that promotes this narrative of these chemical weapons laboratories that would exist with the help of the West in the Republic of Moldova and Ukraine. Another narrative is related to the out-of-control mines in Odessa, which endanger movement in the Black Sea. A recent narrative is linked to the employment of Ukrainian refugees instead of the Moldovans. Even in the National Library circulate the rumor that Ukrainian refugees will be hired instead of the Russian-speaking personnel, which is a big fake, and Ms. Pentele can, can confirm this. Okay. So, the question is, how was it possible for a European government to the, win the election in Moldova? As you know, we had a change of power in 2020, and this is a core question, because uh, from 90s, we somehow had a very, very strong Russian propaganda in, in uh, the Republic of Moldova. And here I will take, let's say, a big part for, for us, for those who implemented media literacy activities. So starting from 2014, when we had the first invasion of Russia in Crimea, in Moldova started a big, a large media literacy campaign. Uh, international NGOs between them, ERI, Equal Rights and Independent Media, uh, in partnership with other local NGOs, launched different projects aimed at developing media literacy competencies and building resisti resistance to uh, disinformation. And uh, 
beneficiaries were, well, of course, I will talk more about librarians, but we also have programs uh, target, that targeted students, uh, teachers, and uh, we have big NGOs, Internews, uh, IJC, uh, Independent Journalism Center, um, Freedom House, who are focusing on other target groups, so that together we were managed to, to join our efforts and to work with the population from the Moldo Republic of Moldova, uh, trying to make them uh, stronger in counter countering uh, disinformation, manipulation uh, and propaganda. So these categories share the information with uh, their general public. Here we have librarians from smaller village, from uh, rayonal centers, who worked a lot with their public in order to make them understand how to, uh, how to make the difference between a Tr trustful news between uh, manipulative uh, information and how to find uh, the right information and the right news. So, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, so, due to the work of librarians, a lot of people from Moldova learned uh, all these techniques. And this democratic exercise proved that only by joining our efforts we can stay firm in front of all the attacks of the uh, current informational war which is present more and more in the world around us. We strengthened the democracy in our country and this was the result of the librarians' involvement. So at the end it would be a round of applause for, for them especially because they contributed a lot to this, um, this process. Uh, just in, in numbers, uh, a, few, a few numbers of the impact of media information literacy program implemented, but it's only by ERIM, so at national level the, the impact is much, much higher. So over 4,700 uh, 4, citizens uh, improved, uh, have improved their skills and increased their resistance to fake news and manipulation. And these are only the uh, numbers that we gathered through lists, so official numbers. We understand that their number is this higher because not all, everybody made lists. Over 300 uh, media literacy activities delivered by 183 uh, media literacy trainers. And uh, these are the trainers trained directly by, by us, I mean, within this project. Uh, they shared their uh, information and knowledge with other librarians, which we don't include, uh, we didn't include here. We have uh, uh, a lot of 12 uh, media literacy super trainers. We call them like this because they have advanced skills in media literacy. They provide uh, trainings uh, to librarians, to teachers, uh, and uh, they already have uh, very strong knowledge in this uh, field. Uh, we developed one uh, media literacy information and manual, which is, we are very proud of it. It's an online manual. You, uh, me, later on, we can share with you the link with it. It also has a Russian version for those who don't understand Romanian. So it's a very useful tool uh, that can be used by librarians, but also by the general public. So it's very, very important. Uh, we arranged uh, 46 media corners uh, in, in the libraries. You, you, you can see in the picture one media corner. Media corner could be uh, everything. So it's what librarians wanted. Uh, so, um, so furniture or uh, technique or other things. And uh, we have two media corners in the, li in the penitentiary, which is uh, very good sign for us also. We went there. So we have less uh, people vulnerable to fake news, to manipulations, to propaganda, to very uh, to stereotypes, and uh, that we could solve also uh, with our elections. Uh, I don't know if uh, I should read, but just uh, just one witness from uh, from librarian, for example, uh, Aliona Manch, one of our. Mm, um, a super trainer, uh, she says that uh, 
pro the project is particularly relevant for uh, male professionals because during the pandemic and especially during the outbreak of the military conflict in our neighborhood, librarians were at the forefront of developing the skills of community members to process and analyze information carefully to determine which information is true and which is false. So it's just one, one of the quotes of the librarians. The rest of them you can read afterwards. But generally, librarians uh, uh, see this project very, very uh, useful for, for the people. Uh, uh, I wanted to finish, to end up my presentation with the role of Abereme, because Abereme, the Association of Librarians, played the major role in all this process. They were the engine, uh, they were the most receptive uh, uh, and uh, involved people in all, in all these seven years. Uh, so this project uh, supported the development of Abereme leadership for Moldovan libraries. Uh, they uh, changed the law, uh, they worked on the law, uh, they built the, the skills uh, of in media literacy and institutional, institutionalized uh, media literacy in libraries. Uh, what is very important is that now media literacy capacities of librarians are included in the regional and national budgets, which is very important for, for the library system. And thanks to their works, access and production of quality information are considered a priority in the country. So a big round of applause for the association, for all our librarians who are so good in this process. Yeah. Thank you very much, Daniela. Uh, as I understand, we still don't have any online questions, so I would still urge uh, for, for the viewers to, to ask something. But uh, we have a question from the audience, so please. Thank you. I wanted to ask, what are your future plans in this field? Maybe you have some activities already planned? Uh, for the moment, ERIM doesn't have a, a, continu a continuation of this project, but of course we empowered a lot of BEREME, the Association of Librarians. We built together, we wrote together a strategy, a meal strategy. I'm not sure if any libraries from other countries have a strategy focused especially on media literacy information. So according to the strategy, we are helping them and we are uh, giving them support to access other grants, other funds to continue and to improve implement this uh, strategy, which is very important. Usually donors uh, are hesitating when it's uh, on giving grants to a new, a very young organization as Abereme, but having this strategy helps them very much because they have they have uh, a plan how to implement all this. So for them, it's, uh, it's very useful and they have the manual. So they have the necessary tools to continue. And this actually was the aim of ERIM to strengthen the uh, association of librarians, to give them enough powers so that they can continue the, the work in this field. This was our main goal. Thank you. And another question from the audience. Well, it's mostly a comment, uh, not a question. Thank you for the presentation. Just in the context of the war in Ukraine, I would love to add that our government did a lot of uh, activities in order to counter those uh, propaganda and fake news and misinformation, disinformation. So these uh, actions include like banning all the TV shows uh, and po political debates TV shows, also the news bulletins that uh, contain those uh, propaganda in information. Also, we've banned, you know, all these uh, symbols of aggressions like Z and V letters and uh, also the St. George ribbon. So uh, just for our viewers to, to understand that the government is doing a lot in order to counter this uh, propaganda and the misinformation and fake news, and we'll be doing uh, this. So thank yes, you. and I want to add that one big uh, victory of our government is that we closed down, we shut down Sputnik. Probably you've heard about this pro-Russian propagandistic uh, and uh, Unfortunately, we, the government cannot shut down all the TVs. They tried, but it's a very hard opposition in our society because we have a lot of Russian, pro-Russian population. But uh, as far as I know, the uh, Council of um, uh, the Council of Audiovisual Council gives a lot of fines uh, for for those who are breaking the the truth and they are breaking the. Uh, rules, let's say so. 
So indeed, Mr. Ambassador, our government is is doing, you know, in a very delicate manner. Uh, they are fighting this uh, um, tendency, let's say, pro-Russian tendency, by offering uh, more and more space to the independent media and to the trustful uh, sources of information. So if you don't, yeah, if you Thank don't you. have any yeah. other Thank questions. Thank you very much, Daniela. And uh, we have from the... Online viewers also saying thank you for the very well presented uh, presentation. Uh, yeah, because um, also I would like to add that uh, the question about the Russian TV channels is very topical in Latvia as well, as uh, in this spring we also banned them right after the, the attack on, on Ukraine.